Welcome to Samstra Games, the place to find new strategy game. And today, today it's time to travel the world. We're gonna play Wanderlust. And this is a very interesting game. This is kind of like a traveling game where essentially you're writing a story. It's like a text-based adventure. And you're going on a, on a trip and you're telling the story and depending on the choices you make, the options sort of differ and you can do different things. So it's really interesting. This is kind of a first look. I have actually, I haven't played this game before, but I have watched a let's play of Nukrim. There will be a link for it in the description. So if you want to see him play it, you can see that as well. But I wanted to give you a first look because if I if I pre-play it, then uh, it wouldn't have like a honest reactions, I guess. So what happened in the complete beginning, I played like a little bit of a part, was just essentially four different travelers met up and they will all tell each other stories and we can pick one of them and follow his or her story. So now let's start to choose one of our people. So first of all, a big thank you to the developer for giving me a key to this game. And now let us begin. So we've got options, chapter one, we can play as, okay, as Martine, the essential gap year. Uh, her story, I believe, is part of a demo. There's a demo for this game, so I think if you go for the demo, you'll get part of her story. So we're not going to be playing that together, because, uh, Tomic Story, this is the shortest one, one hour. This is the one I watched played by Nukrim. So again, we're not going to play that one because I've already seen it or seen part of it. So it wouldn't be nearly as interesting. So our choices are Delia, which is a story. Today's always gone tomorrow. That's interesting. Today's always, or we can play Sea Fever in Antarctica. So I mean, we got to choose Antarctica. Henry and Henry, it's story, father and daughter. So let us begin the sea fever and now we have fatigue and stress and we make different choices and based on that our situation our fatigue and stress changes and uh, that gives you different option next time so you might not necessarily like see straight away how your choices matter but for example if you're tired you will not get option to maybe run somewhere or things like that so things will happen a little bit differently so i think it's interesting also what happens in this game and i think that's interesting i've kind of read about is that Sometimes you make a choice and it's just like you can't do that choice. So that's kind of like to symbolize that you can't always control everything, which I think is pretty interesting. So we watch the sunrise. The lonely statue. There was a distinct chill in the twilight air. Set there suspended between night and day. The smell of the sea and the sound of the waves were even more noticeable. And then there was light. Oh, I love that. Slowly, almost imperceptibly, a row of giant silhouettes appeared against the brightening sky. They watched in awe. They sit on their blankets, yawning and whispering, trying not to disturb the atmosphere of the Rapa Nui sunrise. Then they noticed the statue. Did you see this? Oh, oh, it's Martine. Okay. Did you see the statue near the entrance? Asked Martine when they went for a walk sometimes later. I wonder why they put it there. There's no. St there was one statue standing with its back to the others, isolated from the main ahul. Punishment? Said so Tomek. Anger? Martine joked. A guardian, perhaps? Adelia said. I I think it could be a guardian. Sure, let's go with the guardian. Maybe it's a guardian, suggested Adelia. Or maybe it just needed solitude, smiled Henriette. We all need some, some from time to time, and I guess my story is about that. She took a sip from her thermos, giving them time to focus. Sometimes the sea beckons. Ooh, I'm excited for this. I have to answer, she said, looking at the waves. Alright, alright, go girl. I've been on a boat a few times in my life, but uh, definitely not in any sort of like a longer trip. I think longest was like, I don't know, an hour maybe? Yeah, something like that. Sea fever, let's begin the story in Antarctica. Ooh, did you see the penguins? I wasn't really looking at the picture, I was just thinking, I was like, wow. Let's start the, jo the journey in Docklands. Love the name. Look at this. Our apartment in London. Okay, this is our father, I presume. Are you ready, darling? I took a long... Oh, no! Okay, husband. Okay, I don't know. I guess we'll meet the father later. I took a long, physical look at my sea bag and then my husband. He was leaning against the door, graceful as a cat. Our kid, by comparison, was a shapeless blob of fluff. She stared coldly at me from the hallway, clearly disgruntled by my packing. I smiled almost. I kept packing. Um, yeah, we're ready. I'm always ready way ahead with my packing. 
Mark reached out and took him a needle folder from the nightstand. Still don't understand why you do it, he said, and I sensed some tension on Beskara's smile. Was he worried? The case or the sea? I haven't decided about the case. The sea? I just have to go to the sea. This, I have this full... You know me, I just have to. This is an old discussion. I felt the weight of the manila folder in my hand before pushing it into the bag. I haven't really decided about the case yet. I pulled tightly on the drowse thing. We must go down to seas again to the lonely sea in the sky, he said, hugging me. You and your sea fever. Because the man who's been around the world twice never sailed to the other thing on a tall ship. It is quite tall, isn't it? <sighs> it is. Sticking to his chest, he chuckled. I looked up. You're worried. I comforted my suspicions. His back. He was usually tense. What's wrong? Darling, you're sailing into the Antarctic. I'm scared you're going to fall into the sea and freeze or be eaten by a bear. <laughs> Let's just shake our head. We already talked to him about this probably many times before we went on the trip. There's no point in arguing. Shook my head and said, Lucky I married you for your looks. <laughs> Did you? And you're being overprotective. I'll be fine. I'll be back at the beginning of December, just in time for Christmas preparations. It better be. If you're not, you'll miss your birthday present. Ooh, I kind of like him. Seems like a like a nice husband. Uh, let's, let's catch a plane. That seems like a good idea. Let's not get stuck. Looking out the window, it was raining, of course, when I boarded the train to Oxfordshire. I planned to take a standard flight to Sao Paulo, then fly to Santiago, and from there to Punta Arenas. But then I realized that I needed to clear my head and have some sort of privacy before being locked up with eight other people for five weeks. Yeah, the military plane was just the ticket. Whoa, military plane? Come on, girl. I'd fly straight to the Falcon Islands with only one stop at refuel in Cape Verde. I'd never been to the Falcon Islands before, but of course Dad had been there before I was born. There were some photographs of the islands that used to grace the walls of his study. I always thought it was Scotland. The same bare rocks, the same grey skies. No wonder the British were so fond of them. I've got no comments on that. <laughs> the plane was huge, unattractive and surprisingly comfortable. It looked like I was the only civilian aboard. Henry? Boomed a voice behind me in a broad script of Scottish accent. Young Henry Taylor? I felt myself grin from ear to ear, I turned around and he was immediately embraced by a boulder of a man. It's good to see you, Alice there. Are you the cow pilot? Aye, that I am, lass. How are you then? Off on your big Antarctica trip, are you? I looked over my shoulder, and you're there? Um, let's just say... We changed the topic. We don't want to talk about our dad, apparently. Oh, you can see my stress and fatigue on the right top here. You know, same old dad, I noted. And what about you? Ah, uh, can no complain, the Ralph keeps me busy. Speaking of, has he started working again? You know, since... Since what? What happened? Uh, let's just clash the talisman. Apparently we don't really like to talk about this thing, so like... You know... We get... From calm, we move to worried. So that's interesting. So this is gonna change our options in the future and change just kind of what we say. As you can see this worried here. Clash the circle of talisman hanging from my neck. At least I assume that how it works. I read a little bit about this game before and also watched the video, so... But everything else is just like... Crystal. I was struck by a strange sense of foreboding I never had before. Are you alright, boss? Not really, no. Like Dad used to say, somebody just walked over my grave? Okay. Put his hand on my shoulder and say, the Germans call it rise of fever. <laughs> and fret yourself over it, lass. I know it, but something told me it wasn't so simple. Uh, uh. On a plane. Okay. The manila photo felt heavy in my hands as I leafed through the papers again. The case was a representative's action against a major multinational. I can't mention the names, but they've all heard of them, I'm sure. It was a no noble cause, but likely to be tied up in a court for the foreseeable future. I have to spend hours upon hours searching for precedent, going over everything with a fine tooth comb so we could make a nuanced case. If I went for it, I'd be buried for months, maybe years. I'd be stuck in London wearing long, tedious hours, likely appealing and reappealing. The corporation wouldn't play fair, that was for sure, so they're definitely worried. Closed my eyes and took a deep breath and sighed. Okay, can we get there? Now we're annoyed. Okay. Alasdor shook my arm. Cabo Verde. Somehow I managed to sleep through the landing in Cabo Verde. I woke up when Alasdor shook my arm. Coffee? Coffee? <laughs> I could murder a cup of tea. Now let's just say, yes, that would be lovely. That was my attempt at British accent. That was it for the whole thing. <laughs> I said, trying to shake off the unpleasant dreams I had had. 
took the cup and looked at the manila fort in my lap. The documents had fallen to the floor while I was asleep. I reached for them and knocked over the coffee. Yeah, that's because we were annoyed. The paper crinkled as the dark stain seeped through the paper. The strange sense of foreboding crept up on me again. Yeah, I was just not having a good time, okay? We took off and the AC kicked in, blasting me with cold air. Right? Antarctica, the last free place on Earth. No civilization, no nations, no government. The only human activity allowed there was for science. In terror, at least, there was still plenty of rule bending going on. From time to time, I could make out the lights of lonely ships in the vast ocean, thousands of feet below. This time, I didn't dream. Everything just seemed to slip away. The only thing that was real was the journey ahead. No? Nothing else? Okay. Apparently now we're thinking. Oversleeping. Okay, we'll go. Mount Pleasant, the Falkland Islands. A military aircraft do not land gracefully. They drop from the sky towards the unsuspecting ground. I ran my tongue around my teeth after we slammed down. I could swear some of them have been knocked into my skull. <laughs> Girl. I've got nothing to say. I left the plane and was greeted by the cool, salty air. Damp moorland covered the landscape so for as far as they could see. I could close my eyes for a moment or ask her as my skipper. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Lowers our stress, which is good. So we're now energetic, which is fantastic. Close my eyes and inhale deeply, taking it all in. I couldn't wait. I was at the edge of the world on my way to aboard a decent-sized boat and sail some of the wildest waters on Earth. And I felt like I'd just been given my first case all over again. I look around. I look around to see if anyone was there to meet me. He was waiting for me outside. For a moment, I thought my husband was right there. Actually, and there... What? Uh, oh, sorry. For a moment, I thought my husband was right, and there actually were bears in the Antarctic. Just crazy. It's not polar bears. Rado! We patted each other on the shoulder and shook for a moment. So How's it going, kid? Do you want to go straight to the yacht or do you plan to some penguin watching? Penguins! Yes, I'd love to see some. We're energetic now. We gotta get excited. Alright, let's go see some penguins. Show me all the penguins. Yeah, I want to see some penguins. Hello, penguins. Hello. Radio parted as close as he could to the beach. A sea lion colony greeted us with a chorus of trumpets and barks. We could see some of them surfing the breakers that were rolling in off the ocean. Even though they flopped around the beach accurately, the moment they were in the water, they moved with swiftness and grace. Watch them. Relaxes me to watch them. I watched them transfix and almost forgot about the penguin. <laughs> Girl, penguins are better than sea lions. The dazzling white sand which reminded me of the beach I'd seen in the Caribbean was specked with washed up kelp. The waves boomed and crashed, albatross drifted overhead and the vast expanse of water made me feel oddly elated. I was almost jumping up and down with excitement. Can I just stay here? Come on, let me stay. You watch the sea please? It's perfect. Set down. Uh, by the way, if the fatigue goes up it means we're tired down, it's okay, so we're now very relaxed. I sit down, stretch my legs and then yawn and close my eyes for a second. Just for a moment. Woke up in the car with Rado's jacket over. Did he carry me to his car? Like, I'm not against that, but also like, what? No, it's uncanny, he said. It's the ability of yours to fall asleep in 30 seconds. How do you do it? I shook. No idea. It only works when I sail. I have terrible bouts of insomnia when I'm in London. Alright. The church is a post office, police station, and school. Stanley was not a big town. Went to the act. Old friends. Alright. The act was beautiful. Its sleek, well built hull was painted a stunning vermilion that could be seen from miles away. Its tall mast and huge solid winches looked like they were ready for everything nature could throw at them. Five other people were already on board, and the other two were joining us in Uashia. The first person I bumped into was Chris. Typical, he said. I just made myself the perfect cup of coffee and you up here. I should have known. Gave him a hug. Good to see you too, grumpy old bugger, he said. He pushed the cup of coffee into my hand. Mel cabin, dips on the lower bunk. I wasn't tired. I mean, I just rested. But once I climbed into my bunk and out of the sleeping bed, I decided to close my eyes for a moment. No dreams came, just a peaceful night's sleep. Now we're cheerful! Nice. The morning on the Yask was great. These temperatures would take some getting used to. But I don't want to think about work. That stresses me out. Let's think about... We're on a vacation. We're happy. We're having a good time. This was the precious moments between my work and the trip. I wanted to make the most of it. I decided to go for a walk and look around. Stanley was minuscule, but I did have five pubs. <laughs> Girls like to drink, apparently. Grab me a prepaid SIM card, Rebbe shouted after me. And don't stay out too long. Sure, man. He's not my dad, but like, come on. Oh my god. Okay, sea lions are better than penguins. There's a sea lion at the end of our pier. 
Hey, kitty, kitty. Yeah, that's not a call for a sea lion, but sure. I tried to get to the mansion, ignored me, and started scratching behind its ear. Oh, that's so sweet. With its hind flipper, kind of like a cat. Girl, you think too much about cats. Uh, do you want to go for? We can go for walk, shopping, souvenirs, to look around, or have a drink. Let's uh, go shopping. We don't seem like that kind of girl, but I want to do it. It's the same as any British supermarket. We bought the same car. That's what you want it. I'll take it. I brought in another for myself so I could do WhatsApp my husband before I disappeared for five weeks. I wonder if I'd manage here without his Netflix. <laughs> I'm really liking this husband. Then I asked myself the same question. How would I manage without my Netflix? Did I go through every book in the world? I used to take at least four of them on each trip. Now I just had my Kindle and some Power Mag. Don't brag, girl, okay? Get it. Okay, no more stuff at supermarket. There were a few hundred houses scattered across the incline overlooking the bay. It wasn't much, but it was a swimming pool with a free shower that I definitely use later in the evening. You know what? Let's uh, go for a walk. You seem to sort of like to enjoy nature and just kind of look at stuff. Let's do that. I made a huge black cat. What do you have with cats, girl? Who decided to keep me company? There was a Mon Main Street, some houses, very typical British monument, and at first I felt like I was in a small time somewhere on the British coast. Let's just keep walking. I'm gonna relax, not get stressed. I walked with a spring in my step, the black cat following me curiously. Okay, okay, come with me. Come with me to Antarctica. The only cars I saw on the street were Land Rover Defenders, my favorites. I wish they hadn't stopped making them. Now, why don't you stop? I guess we'll look around. We just gotta do stuff. To my right was a small building with a sign reading East Jetty Company. Those guys pick up the Zimbabwean minesweepers every morning and drop them at the minefields. What? Who oh, is talking to me? You didn't know? There were almost 20... Uh, 200,000 mines left after the war. Penguins are too late to send them off, but humans? Humans are dumb. Oh, are those with me again? I didn't realize that. Alright, man. Okay, we're going back. It was raining cats and dogs all day. <laughs> but the engine started without any trouble and everybody was up on the deck, making jokes and taking photos. Chris, my cabin mate, and the other person on my watch emerged from under the deck with the thermos full of coffee. Alright. First we needed to head south towards Isla de los Estados and later to the Lemar Strait. From Ushaya, we plan to go around Cape Horn and south to Antarctica and the Lemar Chan Channel. Channel? I don't know. Probably Channel, not Chanel, sorry about <laughs> that one. On the way back we wanted to go around King George Island. Right. Finally back to Ushaya. At least that was the plan. It seems like it probably wasn't what happened. Interesting. It'll take us five weeks. All right, let's get in. To sail there and back to Ushaya. Five weeks of splendid isolation. I can't wait till we have a full crew. I brought Reddit some coffee and his favorite mug, the name against railing. Who do you think will hit them first, seasickness or FOMO? He asked. It's why so sarcastic? I'm in a good mood. Since when did you get so? Since the last crew consisted of three high men's divas. <laughs> Oh yeah, that would be funny. Aren't you a little prejudiced then? We're the safe than sorry. He said solemnly then grand. Oh yeah, I get you. Our passport was stamped, all of our documents were signed, and tanks had been filled with 320 gallons of fuel and 1.5 tons of water. We were ready. Let's go. Go make them work for a bit. Let's test our steam for it. I want to see how they handle taking orders from a pixie. Aye aye, Captain. Yeah, let's not get mad. Let's just go on. Let's go. We held in the loose morning slides and the stern spring we turned away from the jetty. There were no newbies on this trip and the whole operation was smooth and quick. Raider was in the cockpit navigating the strait that would lead us into the open ocean. I smiled. Intent. So we were very slowly moving on the boat. We were all on board, excited, talking, taking pictures, soon we'd be underway and the routine of watches would replace the chaos. Couldn't wait for my turn at the helm. Yeah, girl. Navigate the boat like a boss. With the mainsail and jeep up, we turned the engine off. Silence. Just the wind and the ropes, the water slapping the hull and our hushed conversation. I'm slow. You don't need to hush, girl. They can, nobody can hear you. You're alone on a boat. With your bunch of people, but you know, you get it. It was time to start my watch. A sudden jolt of the boat threw me against the wall. I cursed under my breath and started to put on layer after layer. My life jacket was the last thing to go on, but as always it felt odd. I was putting a corset over a raincoat. I went on deck. Crawl outside the first night. 
The boat was picking up speed, restless listening to port. The wind was strong and the swell was starting to build and the waves were crashing against the boat in a hypnotic rhythm. Yes. Ah. Till the sails on the vessel started to pitch and have heave in the steeper waves. I could feel the pressure of the wind, its power propelling us forward, the ropes tightening all around me. My breathing seemed to synchronize with the roll of the ocean. I could feel my sea fever eyes stretch and expand. The night was dark and moonless. The watch was four hours, two people, one hour inside to warm up, make a hot beverage, ride down on the walk, one hour outside behind the wheel, hooked to the mast, keeping the course steady. We were quiet. Working on the ropes, watching the wind, listening to the sounds of the sea. No? Okay, I thought I was gonna say something in the game's like, no. I feel like this is a good game for learning how to do voiceovers, because like, it changes the mood, so you want to try to try to kind of do that. I don't know if I did well, but I feel like this would be a game to learn to do that. And like, you know, to practice. At night you sail blindly, putting your trust in the instruments. With my watch over, I could finally rest. On the open sea, the air started working harder. I grinned, facing the waves. Everything was going well. <laughs> Famous last words, you know. But now we're actually very happy. The air was going six knots. Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, it would be worse than seven knots, but, you know. It was our galley watch, hooking and rocking boat was a challenge, not my favorite thing in the world. You can joke with Chris, talk or avoid conversation. Let's joke with Chris. We're kind of having a good time. You want to talk to him? Hey, buddy. You know, I thought about going to Antarctica. You know, I thought about going to Antarctica once before, said Chris. What? A good cold feed. <laughs> he laughed. Okay. Then I'd gone, Henry, why are you encouraging him? It's my duty. As the first officer explained, to keep you entertained. Ooh, I like this girl. Why are you calling me Henry? Isn't my name Henrietta? My father's name is Henry. Why are you calling me that? I don't know, okay? Uh, wh why am I saying Henry and his father Henrietta? That was in the beginning. It was like a father and daughter, which was like Henrietta and Henry, you know, so. I wrote some three differences of coffee. You could never have too much coffee. Hello. I washed all the dishes. Apparently we're still cheerful even though we're washing all the dishes. Now we're optimistic even. Okay. In spite of my watch was over, now it was time to take the helm. Even though I had double insulated gloves on, my hands felt cold. We were excited for this part, girl. Okay, now we're calm. Okay. Apparently once we, once we take the helm, we're like, we gotta be calm, we gotta focus. Okay, freezing my butt off. Nice weather, brisk, isn't it? The question poofed into the air and hung there. Look at Chris considering how to reply. Call it brisk. As long as we're on the boat, let's agree to call it brisk. So are you staying up here? I could stay. I could stay all day. The views are spectacular. Spectacular enough to freeze your butt off? At a girl. I mean, yeah, we like look at stuff. Dolphins! Oh yeah. I heard from above. I rushed on the deck to watch, remembering to clip on in the process. Uh, yeah, let's sit on the deck. We don't care about the cold. I want to see the dolphins. Marge's face was getting greener and greener with every wave. I'll be downstairs, she said, and disappeared. Yeah, girl. Gonna have a hard time here, I think. We listed a little and sailed on the bright red of our hull reflecting off the waves, so we didn't see any dolphins? I thought it would show me dolphins. Like, yeah, I was excited. Dolphins escorted us for some time, then they got bored. I wish them goodbye. Bye bye, dolphin. I was kind of hoping to stay with you. I actually saw dolphins once in a real. Ooh, actually, it took a longer than an hour long trip. It was at least three hours long because we were looking at the dolphins. That was cool. It was getting colder with every minute. Heavy clouds on the horizon told us that the snow was coming and a storm with it. Steep, ragged mountains loom ahead of us, menacing and magnetic in equal measure. We look at the unwelcoming shores, the cliffs, and the narrow mouths of the fjords. It feel the force of the base crushing against the helpless rocks. And we seem to be getting at Isla de los Estados. Our destination. Oh, our first destination. The anchor. Anchor? In the morning I put up my merino gear, socks, thermal underwear, sweatshirt. I once heard the alpaca wool provide better insulation, but there was no way to weave it as finely as merino wool. I went to the gallon. 
and started to prepare breakfast for the rest of the queue. While I was beating the eggs, I thought about Aaron Netware. Every fishing family had its own distinctive set of cables on the sweater so they could identify the bodies of the drowned. When the sea found and released them to the show shore, let's not think those gloomy dogs. Scrambled eggs smelled good. Isla de los Estados was not a welcoming island. The mountains tall and sharp were covered in dry grass, and the waters around the island were known to be treacherous. There used to be a prison there, and then the seal processing factory, but the elements ultimately prevailed. Now there was a military base in Porter Perry where we were moored. There was no sign of the prison left. Now nah, let's go to base. I want to see the prison. I mean, uh, okay. Want is a bit of a strong word, but we'll check out the prison. There were some buildings in the base for servicemen, a cat and a dog. What do you have at cats go? Like, you have cats everywhere around you. It's getting out of here. Give the soldiers some wine and cake. They give us coffee. I thought about the tradition of gift giving and reciprocity, the most universal sign of peace and goodwill among humans. I wanted to see more of the island, so we hiked to a nearby waterfall. It boomed through the landscape as we approached the gallons upon gallons of cold water crashing down from a vertical slab of rock. I stood there. Mesmerized. We are so relaxed here. Optimistic again. Stood there mesmerized by its raw beauty to sublime. Just the ocean, the rocks, and source of pure, chilled, fresh air. The time hemisphere waterfalls and something surreal about them. We returned to the yacht, made some coffee, ate some of the banana bread Chris baked, and talked for a little bit and went to sleep. I slept. Wanna be you wanna be re arrested. Even though the wind howled in the ropes and tossed the boat around like it was a toy. I don't care. Good morning. The morning, Chris shook my arm. Do you want to build a slum? <laughs> man, I gotta love Chris. Do you want to build a snowman? He asked. Yeah, I want to build a snowman. It's kind of fitting because there's gonna be frozen too soon. So, you know. It's a bloody cold outside. Everything, the deck, the sails, the rigging was covered in either snow or ice. The base dog worked happily, rolling in the snow, the rising sunlit, everything in a pink and purple hue. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen, Chris gasped. Let's build a snowman, I said. We look at each other and click our cups of coffee. Welcome to the Antarctic. And I think this is a good time to end the episode. So this is Wanderlust. You can play a demo yourself if you'd like, or you can check the game on Steam. And you can click on the right top to watch me play Spellcast University, which is a game where we build a magic school. Or you can click on the right bottom to watch Ecosystem, where we control the evolution. I'll see you in one of those. Bye-bye.